Tell somebody that today is your day of escape. Praise the Lord. Today is your day of escape. From what? You didn't ask. <laughs> From what? Praise the Lord. <laughs> Some of you will think escape to America. <laughs> From what? Praise the Lord. Today, we are talking about escape from poverty. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So you can see that you spoke prophetically. As long as you will yield yourself to the word of God and receive the word of God, the word of God will produce in you. God said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, not because of lack of prayer, not because of lack of fasting. He said, my people are destroyed for what? And God said, because you have rejected knowledge, I have also rejected you. But you will never have rejection again. Yeah. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Now I say to you that poverty is spiritual. If you love the Lord with all your heart, where will poverty be? <laughs> Think about it. Amen. If I love the Lord with all my heart, you know, your computer memory can be full, right? Even your phone can be also full. Amen? And so when you try to store more or put more software, what happens? It wouldn't go in. It wouldn't go in. Amen? Amen. Now, if your heart is full of love, when hatred tries to go in, it, it wouldn't go in. When poverty tries to go in, it will not go in because, because it is full. Amen? Amen? The love of God is a retrainer and it's a compeller. It restrains you and compels you. The love of Christ restrains us from poverty. The love of Christ compels us into prosperity. Amen. 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 Just like it restrains us from evil and compels us to do good. The same love, the same spirit, the same power is a righteous force. It is a righteous force. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So today, today, you are going to find out how to escape from poverty. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Are you ready? Yes, okay, take your seat and carry your Bible and your notebook. And, and follow me to Matthew. Let's start from there. Let's see what Jesus says to us. Matthew chapter, where are we going? <laughs> Do you know where we are going? You don't know? Now then try five. Matthew chapter 6, actually. 619, not 419. Amen? Amen? Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. 
I want you to know that the moment you got saved, that was the moment you escaped from poverty. It's a question of knowledge for you to manifest it. Amen? The day you got born again, that was the day you were transported from poverty to prosperity. If you will know it. Amen? So, in Matthew 6, 19, Jesus says something to us. He says, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. Jesus is saying there is nothing, there is no security on earth. Amen. Even if arm robbers does not break in, ordinary ants can chop away your prosperity. Ants can chop your money. Haven't you seen your cloth that you, you kept it there because it's special? And the day you brought it there, you found out that rat or ant or any other thing has chopped it. And there your prosperity goes. The money for that cloth goes. And you will, you will love to kill that rat. <laughs> but you will not see it. <laughs> You'll be so angry with rat. Amen. Amen. But listen to what Jesus said. Do not lay your treasures on earth. Amen. Amen. Do not do what? Put your treasures away. He said, first, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. Verse 20. But lay up for yourself treasures where? In heaven. <clears throat> where neither moth nor rust destroys. And where thieves do not break in and steal. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Isn't it amazing that in heaven you don't need to flee from mosquito? No ant, no rat in heaven. Already sounds beautiful to me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I say to you, when our time here is gone, we should go home with joy. We should go home rejoicing to escape this dustbin. People say they want to be alive by all means. By all means. Amen. Amen. I, I, I was talking with my uncle that came to visit and I said to him, I would rather go home to my father in heaven than be in this earth and be a subject of experiment and uh, medical. You know what I mean? Where Every day they subject you to all manner of test. Uh, Enoch was talking to me one day. He said, Daddy, don't let them take my blood again. I said, who took your blood? He said, that place that the mommy took him to the hospital and they took his blood. I said, what did they do with it? He said, I don't know. But don't let them take my blood again. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I said, they will not take your blood again. Amen. We are called to live a life of dignity. Dignity. We are called to live a life that represents God and represents him well. If that life is not possible, Jesus wouldn't have come. He said, I have come that you may have life. I have it what? More abundantly. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven so that you can look forward to going to heaven. Where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. Verse 21, everybody. Again. Again. For the last time. But the question now is, where is your heart? That is how we will find out where your treasure is. Amen? 
There are businesses I don't like to do at all. One of them is transportation business. Another one is to buy shares. Another one is to do forex trading. You know why? Those businesses can give heart attack. <laughs> you see a man that have three buses. By 8 p.m., the buses are not back. He will go and stand at his gate. Where are you? Where are you? When are you coming back? The driver said, I will soon be on my way. Hey, he will call the second one. Where are you? He said, he will say to himself, all these drivers will kill him. It's supposed to be a business. And then when three of them comes, he wants to account. They were supposed to give him maybe 10, 10,000. And one said, last man hold me, held me all day. And I was able to make 2,000. The other one said, the vehicle broke down. I was able to come back 1,000. We was expecting 30,000. And the last one comes and said, you know, Oka, we are managing this vehicle. And today, it will not just move. We will load, we will push, it will stop. And so how much do you say, Oka, 500 naira I manage you. Praise the Lord. The man's heart, the man's heart will knock. Praise the Lord. And the same thing with shares. You buy shares. When it's going up, your high blood pressure goes up. When it's going down, you suffer downward blood pressure. <laughs> Amen? And so you are connected. Every day you are looking at the shares, shares movement. Shares movement. And then the other one is forex trading. God deliver you from such. All these businesses, there's nothing wrong with it if the Lord directs you into it. But if the Lord did not direct you, be careful. Amen? Jesus said to us, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The place of your treasure and the place of your heart are connected together. And yet many people do not know when their treasure becomes their heart. And so the devil will set you up. The devil will set you up. And then we hit your treasure so that he will hit your heart. Amen. We need to understand there are things that gives us life. And there are things that takes life from us. In Proverbs 21, 21, the Bible says something to us. Say, whoever pursues righteousness and love finds life, prosperity, and honor. In NIV. In NIV. Proverbs 21, 21. Praise the Lord. Whoever pursues righteousness and love. Anybody that pursues righteousness and love finds life. You find prosperity and you find honor. Praise the Lord. Who wouldn't like to have those things? And yet, it is encompassed in righteousness. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things what are those things? Life, honor, prosperity. All is in the kingdom. Praise the Lord. And Jesus said to them that the widow that gave two mites has given the best gift. But the Bible said there were many rich people that gave out of the abundance. But the widow, the widow, the widow that gave only two mites. Today, we talk about her. And if Jesus started in the next 1,000 years, they will still talk about this widow. What about the rich guys that put plenty of money? What about them? We can program ourselves not to be poor. We can talk ourselves out of poverty. Amen? Amen. For many years ago, I was talking myself out of poverty. Many years, many years, I was talking 
myself, talking myself, talking myself out of poverty. People didn't like it. People think I was talking too much. And today, I still talk much more. But God has put me in a place where I don't have to stay with faith killers. I talk where I celebrate I'm talking now. Praise the Lord. And God also has brought a different kind of family to me that when I say I'm going to buy a jet, they say, Daddy, how much? Praise the Lord. They don't ask you jet. Jet. You, have not, you don't even have a car. You are talking about a private jet. You see, if you are not bold among faith killers, you cannot be bold among faith builders. That's the truth. If you are not bold, if you are not able to proclaim God's blessings, God's word among faith killers, you cannot do it among faith builders. These things, you need to practice it. You need to live it. Because that's where your life is. Our life revolves around our word. Our life revolves around our word. You can choose to be rich in whatever state you are. You can choose to be poor in whatever state you are. But I made up my mind many years ago that I'm not going to be poor and nor dwell in poverty. It is one thing to be poor. It is another thing to dwell in poverty. And the, both of them is a big difference. Praise the Lord. By faith, we understand that the words were framed by the word of God. That the words were framed. What word? He didn't say word. He said the words. So the words of prosperity, the word of divine heart, the word of love is framed by your word. You make up your mind that you are going to love everybody and you begin to walk in love. You talk about walking in love. You see, what will it cost you to walk in love? Actually, it will not cost you anything except your pride and your ego. The first thing that hinders you from walking in love is your pride and your ego. And so you are thinking, how can I condescend so low? Well, you will go lower than that if you walk in hatred, straight to hell. You will go low. And you will go lower. It is important for you to learn that Walking in love is God's way. Walking in love is God's way. Walking in love is God's way. I cannot say it enough. Walking in love is God's way. And then the I said, I said, I made up my mind not to dwell with poverty. You can also dwell in poverty. You wouldn't know it. You wouldn't know it. You come to dwell in poverty. You come to dwell in poverty. Should I give you some of the signs of dwelling in poverty? Would you like to know that? Some of the signs. Some of the signs. Some of the signs of dwelling in poverty. I will give you some of it here. The poor, the poor struggles to give while the rich counted joy to give. That's number one. The poor. They struggle to give. While the rich count it joy to give, praise the Lord. It is an opportunity to touch life. Giving is a thing of joy. Giving is a thing of joy. And we're going to see how Paul looked at giving in the church in Corinth. Number two, the poor gives carefully why the rich give lavishly? The poor give what? Carefully. They count the balance. They say, remember tomorrow when you are giving. They say, be careful. Remember the children's school fees. And so they are careful in their giving. Amen? Amen. One, one time, many years ago, our company accountant decided to take to take mommy and I out for lunch. And I know that that guy doesn't spend money. Anyhow, of course he's an accountant. 
And so we went to one of the fast food joints, and then he said, he said, he said, sir, order what you want. <laughs> I was looking at him, and I said, should I order what I want? He said, of course, you know what I mean, but order what you want. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And then, <laughs> even, my, even me, I was careful to order because I know whom I'm with. Amen? Amen? But then, I didn't go empty. I went prepared. Just in case. Praise the Lord. There are levels. But I know somehow he was counting the cost. He was counting the cost. And so, I told him, I said, don't worry, I'm here. He said, no, 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 sir, you can go ahead. It's just, uh, <laughs> but he meant well. Amen. Amen. There are different levels, like I said. I arrived at the airport one time, and I was picked up. And as we were going, I said to the guy, I said, stop, I want to branch into the supermarket and buy some things I need. As I was taking my briefcase, he said, no, 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 daddy, you don't need your briefcase. I have money. I was surprised. I said, you have money? I said, let's go. And then he carried the basket, and I was throwing things, throwing things. After a while, he whispers, maybe I should go and bring the briefcase. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I said, maybe. <laughs> I said, maybe. <laughs> Amen. And then he went and brought the briefcase, and the case was settled. And I didn't ask him anything. I didn't say anything to him. He tried. Praise the Lord. So the poor gives carefully while the rich give lavishly. Number three. The poor learn without details. The poor, they learn without what? Details. And impatient with discipline. The poor. When you are teaching them, they are not, they don't pay attention. They are not diligent in learning. And they are impatient with discipline. If you discipline them, they get offended. And so you can see a poor person by the way he handles discipline. Amen. I remember one time a Sunday engineer of Pastor Paul Adefra said he was suspended and then as he was suspended, he served that suspension for one or two weeks, and he left the church. And as he left the church, so because Pastor Paul and I are friends, and both of us know this guy in question, so I spoke with Pastor Paul. Pastor Paul said, talk to him. Let him come back and serve his sentence. Then everything will be okay. Then I called him. I sat him down. I was talking to him. I said, look. I said, look, you know what you did is rebellion. Your pastor suspended you and you left the church. I said, look at your condition. I said, I've spoken to him. I said, go back and serve your sentence and be restored. He said, okay. He was still arguing. What did I do even? I don't think I should be surprised. He was talking and talking and talking. And then he said something that made me to stop talking about the matter. And I realized. He said, he said, Uncle Oyu, do you even know that only one year Pastor Paul used to senior me? I said, what did you say? He said, yes, now. Pastor Paul senior me only with one year after all. I looked at him. The day you measure the age of your pastor with your age, you are gone. You are gone. We know no man under the flesh. And as long as you compare age of your pastor with your age, you are finished. And I stopped talking to him. You know what happened? And I think that was the greatest foolishness he did. He went back to the church, served the rest of the sentence, and then left out of offense too. And so he said that after all, he served the sentence and he left. Until today, he's still a wanderer. I spoke to him not long ago, I think a few 
no, no, sorry, last year. I spoke with him. I called him just to know how he's doing. He left his wife and children. He, he is still a wanderer since that time. He is still a wanderer. Do you know what it means to have a pronouncement of discipline on you from the pulpit of Jehovah? I remember one guy. He came to a church. He did the same thing. He was in household of um, Pastor Chris Okete. Household of God, right? He was in that church, Pastor Chris Okete. And he has this, done something, um, Pastor Chris had suspended him with discipline. And so he left the church. And then as he wandered about, wandered about, then he came to the church where we were all serving and all that. And he went to the pastor and told the pastor the truth, actually. That's, uh, uh, you know, he told the pastor that actually he was suspended. And that the way it happened, he didn't like it. But he would like to join this place and that pastor should pray for him. He wants to be a member of this church. Pastor said, okay, I am going to pray for you. As the pastor lifted up his hand to pray, the Lord said, don't pray that prayer. Send him back to where he is coming from. Praise the Lord. Send him back to that place. He said, you cannot revoke that discipline. You can't revoke that suspension. You know, there are levels in the realm of the spirit. Just because you are called pastor, so, 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 and then something happens, you think you can change it. No. There are things that even if you happen, when I hear you, I will run away from you. I mean, it's like Jonah on the run from God. And Jonah comes to you and says, you know, I refuse to go to Nineveh. Can you pray for me so that I will be restored with God? Shouldn't you take your run from him? Oh, if you are still laughing, I will run. Amen. There are levels in the realm of the spirit. Praise the Lord. You come to me, you say to me, you have a problem with Pastor Chris, or Yakilome, or Papa Adeboy, and all that. I will look at you again and say, what did you say? You will tell me again. You say, what did you say? You will tell me again. I said, please, don't come near me, no matter what you do. Stay away from me as far as possible. And so the poor have problem with discipline. The poor, they are impatient to learn, and they have problem with discipline. Number four, the poor looks for shortcuts, while the rich seeks for the best way. You know, they always say, I want to know how quick can I make money? I want to make money quick, 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 quick. They want it fast. And that is what brings them into 419. 419 is about quick money. You know, wealth without foundation. And so when you look at a person, look at the person's behavior, look at the person, that you will know who will be poor and who will be rich. Very simple. Check this. The poor looks for shortcuts. Why the rich seeks for the best way. Shout hallelujah. Number five and the last one for now. Poor people focus on cost. Why the rich focus on quality. You know this one, don't you? Hello? You know that one, don't you? The poor focus on what? How much? How much? You're always looking for the cheap way. But the rich will say, I want quality. I want quality. Because quality will endure. Amen? In the same way, beauty is cheap. Character is expensive. And so poor people will go for beauty. Rich people will go for character. Hello? It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Is the same thing. The poor wants to get married to a beautiful masquerade. The rich wants to marry a woman with quality, with character. Amen. In the same way, opposite also, women want to marry a rich guy because they are poor. But a, a real woman, a real woman, she wants to marry a man with character. A man that knows his God. A man that serves God. Praise the Lord. 
So poor people focus on cost while the rich focus on what? Quality. Amen. Amen. One of the things you can use is the measure of giving. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, we read last week. Paul said to the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 7. Verse 7. 2 Corinthians 8, verse 7. He said, but since you excel in everything, but since you excel in everything, you excel in faith, you excel in speech, you ex excel in knowledge, you are complete earnestness and in the love we have kindled in you. He says, see that you also excel in this grace of what? Giving. You know what Paul is trying to say? Paul is trying to say, if you have been able to grow up so spiritually, if you are able and you have acquired all the spiritual gift, the way you have acquired the same spiritual gift, you can also acquire another gift. What is that gift? That is the gift of giving. The same spirit that gave you that unction to prophesy, that unction for faith, he says he can also give you the same forgiving. If you dare, if you dare desire it, Paul said to them, there's another spiritual gift. And so you went and desired prophecy, healings, miracles, signs and wonders. Praise the Lord. And so you got all that. In the area of giving, he said, no, Lord, keep that one. I don't need it. But you have gotten all the other gifts. But Paul says, when you are already at a place where you are a prayer warrior, you are a man of faith, you can prophesy, you know the word of God. Paul says, the same grace can propel you to the grace of giving. That's why he says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as you are so prosperous. When you are so prosperous, tell John chapter 2. When you are so prosperous, when you are so prosperous, when you are so, it will have an off of heart flow in your body. It will flow out in you. We need to know that you cannot prosper spiritually and physically be impoverished. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. Amen. How did you become a man of faith? How did you become a man of prayer? It's by grace. Is by grace. And Paul is saying, and the same grace can bring you out of poverty. He says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper. Third John chapter 2. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things, in all things, and be in health just as you are so prosperous. John is talking to those that are mature spiritually. He is saying what Paul said to the Corinthians. You have prospered in your spirit. Therefore, you should prosper in your life. They are connected. He said, but since you excel in everything, 2 Corinthians 8, verse 7 again, but since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness and in the love will have kindled in you. See that you also excel in this grace of giving. Amen. You are able to come out of poverty. Third John chapter 2. If you don't know Third John, you should know first, second. Amen. Excel in giving. Paul is telling us to excel in giving. Why? Why is Paul telling us to excel in giving? You know, the devil is very smart, but wickedly smart. The devil will stop you from giving. The devil will discourage you from giving. But in his kingdom, the devil will demand lives for him to bless them. Think about it. The devil will discourage you to give to God 10% or free offering. The devil will tell you, why are you giving your money to God? Why must you give to God? He will give you reasons to give. 
then when his people come to him, when they come to devil to get money from him, he will demand their loved ones. Kill your mother. Kill your girlfriend. Kill your son. Kill. Devil require blood where God demands just nothing but your money. And it's a shame that the devil will discourage Christians from giving and in his kingdom he will encourage them to give their Isaac to him. Think about it. You know why? I'm about to show you why devil wants to make sure that you don't give. And so, when you obey the devil, you know, God said to you, give that 10,000 you have. You began to listen, but that's all I have. But that's all God is asking. Amen? And you said, devil, I rebuke you in Jesus' mighty name. Huh? There is no way the devil can ask you to give in the first place. Only God can ask you to give. Amen? And then you say, devil, I bind you. You can imagine only 10,000 I have. When God said, give it, give it. Because it's about to change something in your life. And the devil knows the change that's about to come. So what will he do? He will keep you from giving it. He said, don't give it. They want to take your money. Don't give it. And then you will disobey God. You will keep it. The same way God will wake you up and say, pray. Pray. There is an attack coming. Pray. And you open your eyes. You say, oh, oh, Satan, I rebuke you, Jesus, by the name. Amen. Hey, hey, man. You cover yourself again. The spirit will wake you up again. Pray. An attack is about to come. You get up. You bow your knees. In Jesus' name. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon. No you knelt down one o'clock. You open your eyes at 5 a.m. <laughs> you did all night quite all right. On your knees quite all right. Say, devil is a bad devil. At the time, the spirit wakes up to pray. That is when the sleep will be as if it is aromanized. You, the, the sleep will be so sweet. Are you hearing me? Everything will point out for you not to pray. You say, ah, there's no light. There will be heat. Okay? Okay? Let me sleep under 30 minutes. I will get up and pray. You will come back. 30 minutes, you woke up 8 o'clock. Amen. Do you know that God is always warning his people? But his people are not disobeying. That's the problem. God tells you, don't marry this person. You say you will know what to do. You will marry. God will say, don't go there. You say you will know what to do. You will go. And you ask yourself, why are you in this mess? You can escape from poverty even today. What does it take? Reset your heart. Reset your heart. You can. You can. You can. You can. It's possible. Amen. I escaped poverty. And so you can escape poverty also. Left for men, I should be as poor as the church rat. But church rat is no longer poor. Praise the Lord. Left for men, I have come from a very rich family, wealthy family. But in that family, I would have been as poor as the church rat. You know why? The family system, if you don't go with the family order, you will be left to suffer. And for me, I was already an outcast. And what was my offense? My first offense was that I married from outside the outside our our town, so to speak. And so that was my first capital offense. I didn't marry according to their tradition and culture, and so I was supposed to suffer. Amen. Everybody else that wants to marry in their family, you get money. The family gives you money. The family supports you. In my family, wants you want to get married, and you are following their order, you will, you will get money. Praise the Lord. It's a system that is put in place. You don't need to worry about uh, whatever they will do. Even till today, in some way, but it's not like it used to be. When you want to marry and you follow the... Ah, don't 
worry about wedding money. It will come. Amen. They will tell everybody to contribute. Wherever you are, they will write to you. This is so you getting married. Boom, bring your own. Bam. And the same thing for burial. What they do in marriage, what they do in burial. It's a good system. It's a good system. But what is the problem with it is that when it's not based upon the word of God, that's the problem. Amen? Amen. So I escaped poverty. And you too can escape it. Amen. What does it take to escape it? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all that is within you. Get to love the Lord your God. I mean, first, begin to deal with yourself from today. Begin to talk right from today. You go to that face me and face you. That's your level for today, but it shouldn't be your level for tomorrow. And you tell yourself, I'm moving upward. I'm moving forward. Praise the Lord. I am moving what? Upward and forward in the name of Jesus Christ. Very soon, my days here are numbered. You don't need to talk to anybody. Talk to yourself first. Believe it first. Believe it first. You tell yourself, my days in this face, me and face you is, is over. My days of drinking Gary is over. Praise the Lord. My days of drinking what Gary is over. It doesn't matter how sweet the Gary is presently. Let me tell you, the sweetness is as a result of poverty. Praise the Lord. Are you hearing me? Morning, pap. Afternoon, pap. Evening, pap. And you are the one that made the pap by yourself. You, are, you, you know, you have a bucket full of pap. And you say, you know, it makes your system to, 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 to relax. Say, come out of poverty. Huh? Which preacher are you preaching? They say, you know, Pap is very good. Ah! We are not saying it's not good. But there is a problem when it is your main meal. For morning, for afternoon, for evening, with pure water. No, don't you think that something is wrong with it? Quilly, quilly. They, they add it to it. This is my daughter. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, poor man's diet is there too. Poor man diet is also there. But there are people also, when they want to take pap, they have a tin of milk. They have milo. They have everything. You say, what are you having? He say, pap. He say, ah! And you are wasting all these ingredients for pap. <laughs> it's the same pap. But this is executive. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, there's, there's no way you can change poor man's food to rich man's food. Amen. Amen. Say, I cannot be poor. I, cannot be poor. I have a message here. He said, hate poverty. I have the message. One day I will teach that. And maybe I should teach it before the end of the year. Because what you hate will stay away from you. And you will stay away from what you hate. The same way we should hate sin. Are you hearing me? And poverty is an art flow of sin. That's the truth. And that is why if you look at nations that don't serve God, like Haiti, that made voodoo as state religion, they are poor. Though very close to America, but they are very poor. They are very poor. Haiti. You look at countries beside Nigeria, look at Cameroon, look at the Republic of Benin, look at Togo. These people, many of them have made voodoo as a state religion. They say the grandmaster of voodoo is in Kotonou, just next door. Just next door, the grandmaster of voodoo in Africa is in Kotonou. 
And so you say, they are so close to Nigeria, but they are so poor. And you go, escape them, you go to Ghana. You see that Ghana is prosperous, just like Nigeria. Amen. Amen. So you jump and go to Ghana, you see that Ghana is prosperous. Anywhere that you deny God, poverty will be there. It's not a question of thinking. It is a reality. It's the truth. Amen? Amen. So, Paul said to them, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. People that love poorly also give poorly. People that love lavishly also give lavishly. Praise the Lord. And then in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, I am not sure we are going. This is going from chapter 8 to chapter 9. Paul is talking about nothing but giving and how to come out of poverty. Remember, he started with the Macedonian churches, talking about the problem that the Macedonian churches had. Even in their problems, Macedonian churches were still giving and giving and giving. Praise the Lord. And I'm looking at time. And I don't think we have enough time. I don't think we have enough time to go into that scripture in 2 Corinthians 9. So I will leave it for Super Sunday. Praise the Lord. But I want us to look at something in Romans chapter 16, verse 1. Romans chapter 16. When we talk about giving, it is not because the church is poor. It's not because the church needs your money. It is because your situation needs to change. That's why we talk about giving. Your giving transforms you first. But Paul says in 2 Corinthians 9, he says, you are giving causes many thanksgiving to God. Many begin to give thanks. But I want to show you what Paul said, particularly about one lady that was a giver in his ministry. And I will encourage you, those of you that said, uh, women are not supposed to be pastor of a church, women are not supposed to, that Paul says that if a woman is in church, a woman is quiet, the woman is not permitted to be a, church, a, a pastor or not. Go and, read, go and read Romans 16. You take what Paul wrote out of context. Amen? And I'm going to read one to you from Amplified Version. I, I, now, IT people, if you have Amplified, put Romans 16, verse 1 or 2, for me on the projection there. I'm not just talking about Amplified Version. Amplified Classic. That's the original Amplified Version. Amen. There are two Amplified Bibles. There is the new one now that some of you that just got born again, you have. Amen. But there's what they call Classic Amplified Bible. That is the original, original Amplified Bible. Amen. And so they make it clear also that this is Amplified Version, but this is Classic Amplified Version. Praise the Lord. Now, Paul said, now I introduce and commend you to our sister, Phob. Amen? Here he says, a deaconess and a servant of the church at Kentria. So, this woman called the servant of God. In some translation, she's called minister. But in this, she's called deaconess of the church at Kentria. Praise the Lord. He says, verse 2, that you may receive her in the Lord. That you may do what? Receive her in the Lord with love and hospitality. Receive this lady in the Lord with love and what? Hospitality. As God's people ought to receive one another. So we ought to receive one another. But there is something about this sister, this deaconess. There is something unique about her. He says, and that you may help her in whatever. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That you may help her in whatever, whatever she may have. She may what have? She may have a need. 
She may require assistance from you. Anything that folk, Sister Folk wants to do, he said the church should help her without a doubt. Amen? Amen. For she has been a helper of many. Ah, praise the Lord. She has been what? Including myself. Paul wrote about this sister. But what they have done here, this is amplified, right? But now let me take you to the classic. That is why I say you need to know the difference. Praise the Lord. Verse 2. In classic amplified, Paul says that you may receive her in the Lord with a Christian welcome as saints, God's people ought to receive one another and help her in whatever matter she may require assistance from you. For she has been a helper of many, including myself, shielding us from suffering. Shielding us. She was not just a helper. She was a shield against poverty. Well, well, you know, you know this, this, this was bubbling in my stomach. One woman, Paul says, she was a helper of many, including the apostle himself. But there was something much more than her help. She shielded. Ah, she shielded them. Ah, I, I, I wish, I wish you, you, you have this. There are levels of giving. Other people, if you read chapter 16, Paul mentioned the names of so many women and some men, quite all right. But the names of the women were more that Paul mentioned that was helping, that was defending, that was supporting. But concerning ah, the goodness folk, there was something about the The Bible said, in Amplified Classic, it said, he shielded us from suffering. He protected us from affliction, from, from hunger. One woman, like Lydia, that was a purple seller. You know, you are given can have a mandate. You are given can have a mission. See to it that pastor does not suffer. See to it that the church does not suffer. This sister, this sister, Paul says, whatever help she would require, grant it to her because she has been a helper of many. How do you think that Paul will pray for this sister in private? No, how do you think that Paul, oh, sometimes we make too much of too little. We make too much of too little. Too little. Amen. How do you think that Paul will pray for this sister in prayer? He said, he said, she, for she has been a helper of many, including myself, shielding us, not only Paul, shielding us from suffering, shielding us from suffering, meaning that she was a financial protector. She was a financial buffer zone. When she hears about what needs to be done, he said, consider it done. Just continue to preach the gospel. Continue. And that is a place to desire to be. Shielding us from suffering. You can shield the church from shame. You can shield the church from suffering. You can shield your department. You can do something. And funny enough, it is people that do the, 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 the little that demands the most. And Paul says, this sister, whatever she needs in the church, give it to her. Grant it to her. You know why? Sister Phob has escaped poverty. She is a national issue. She is a spiritual issue now. Anywhere she goes, she is in abundance. The apostle has commanded that whatever she needs must be given to her, both in heaven and on earth. Because she has shielded us from suffering. Shielded us from suffering. And do you think that she will ever suffer? Do you think her family will ever suffer? That is the point. That's the point. You come to church, you give an offering $5. Within the week, your son wants to eat. You give him $10 to go and eat. And God is looking at you. In my house, you gave me $5. Now your son wants to eat. You give him $10. Why didn't you give your son $5 and give God $10? No, why didn't you do it? Because that's the right order. No, because God cannot be rated. You don't want your son to get angry with you. And so you give your son more because you love him more than you love God. You have loved the gift more than the giver. 
You worship the, give, the gift more than the giver. You pour everything on the gift. Everything. You go on holidays with your son. You spend $3,000, $4,000. Praise the Lord. And then we have a church project. You give $500 and $1,000. And you think you have done so much. It's hypocrisy. And God looks at it and laughs at you. I can pray all the prayer I want to pray for God to bless you, but God will look at it and put it aside. You know why? You give beyond your ability. You give less than your ability. And that's the way it works with God. You will throw a party for your, for your son's seventh birthday, 18th birthday, 21st birthday, and easily you spend one point something million for that birthday because you are only 18 once. You are right, only 18 once because he may not make 19. Because at the end, it's God that takes 18 to 19 and 19 to 20 and 20 to 21. If you are smart, you should take that money, put it on the altar with your son's name and say, Lord, the 18th birthday, let me see 21. Let me see 30. Let me see 40. Lord, instead of calling people to come and say, Lord, make it happen. You know, there are people, their children have a memorial of them what they did for them in the 18th birthday, in the 21 birthday, but in heaven, there's no memorial for your son. In heaven, there's no memorial, there's no record. You have never placed an altar, placed a, a befitting seed on the altar. I'm telling you, you can escape poverty. Everything is just about your flesh, your flesh, your flesh, your flesh. Your flesh. Oh, I want to wear designers, I want to wear too much, I want to wear. There are two people in the Bible, you should go and look and listen to them. They, they, see, let me tell you, Paul, sorry, Luke talked about the centurion in Luke chapter 7. And then after that, in Acts chapter 10, there was another centurion. I'm not going to get into that because of time. I want to really finish on time today by the grace of God. Praise the Lord. Let me check if I still have time. A little. Praise the Lord. I should go on. But we have people that are online. Praise the Lord. In Germany, it is to 12 years, it's to 1 in Germany. Amen. So I want to bring back our closing time to quarter to 12 by the grace of God. Because when you are in international ministry, don't look at your locality. Look beyond your locality. And the same way also, when you are talking about prosperity, don't be a local champion. <laughs> Amen. Amen? Don't go and build a bungalow and say you are rich in the village where everybody is having a mud house. Amen? Come and build in Lagos. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? Yes. Come and build in Lagos. And that's what God is able to do. God does not make you local champion. God makes you universal. Anywhere you are, the seed is in you. You manifest greatness. You are not limited by your village or your locality. Amen? Live beyond your environment. Live beyond your environment. And that is why when you plan, you don't plan only by what you see around you. You see, when Paul talked about this sister, we are reading about her now. This thing happened so many years ago. So many years ago. But we are still reading about the Connect Folk today. And it can be like that with you in the church also. It can be like that, that your name will be heard and mentioned. Praise the Lord. And that is the way it is. Our love for God. Our passion for God. Paul said, excel in this grace of giving also. Excel in the grace of giving also. He said, don't just stay with the spiritual grace. Stay also with the physical grace of giving. Tell God you want to be a giver. That was my prayer many, many years ago. When I'm in church, I would hear people giving this, giving that, giving that. I would say, ah, Lord, I want to be among the first ten. In fact, I made it my prayer to be among the first eleven in any church I go to. I said, Lord, I want to be among the first eleven. And to the glory of God, there has not been any ministry I joined, and not many of them anyway, that the pastor did not know me personally as, as a partner in the church, as a serious partner. 
There has not been such a church. Even as big as Winners is, Papa knew us personally. We could drive to go and see Papa, Bishop Oyedepo, directly without appointment. You know why? It comes from doing the good things in the local church. Not just prayer. And that's the way it should be. You are known wherever you are because your work, your good work goes ahead of you. Faith without work, James said, is dead. Faith without works is dead. So show me your works by your faith. If you have faith, what does it produce? What has it produced? She has been a shield of suffering. A shield against suffering. One woman, one woman, mighty woman. You can develop giving as a ministry. And when we get to next Sunday, you will find out why is it that people that give never become poor. Never become poor. I will show you from the scripture. And that is why I said, this is Escape from Poverty Part 1. Communion service next Sunday. It will be Escape from Poverty Part 2. Amen? Amen. And you will see clearly written in the Bible. But I told you something today. Devil will discourage you from giving to God. But in his kingdom, he will demand blood to bless people. Think about it. There is nobody that devil gave money that didn't give blood. Go and check them. Don't you see it's on Hollywood? Is there any Hollywood you watched, somebody that made money ritually and didn't kill anybody? Have you seen any? Why do they call them ritual killers? Because they kill to make money. But God never demands blood from anybody. God does not demand blood from anybody. All he says is, bless me with what you have so that I can bless you with what you don't have. And some of us, we don't understand it. Praise the Lord. We don't understand it. When God, when God blesses you, he stays with you. Nothing will take it out. No, nothing. When God blesses you, he stays. He sticks to you. And I want to encourage you, come to that level where God will bless you. Praise the Lord. 